Welcome everybody to the second webinar of Conship Italia Group. My name is Daniele Testi, Head of Marketing and Corporate Communication. Um, together with me today, uh, Peter Robinho from Commercial Department of Conship Italia. Hello to everyone, good morning. Um, as you know, uh, for the one that already attended to the first webinar, Today we would like to talk about uh, fast corridors. It's one of the main topics which uh, we consider relevant for the global supply chain, especially for all the one involved in import activity in Italy. Uh, today we will try to explain uh, better what is a fast corridor, which are the main goals and benefits that customers can achieve through fast corridors, and obviously trying to describe as, as much as easy as possible what is the logistic process of a fast corridor. And obviously we will talk uh, about uh, the clients that can uh, today access to the fast corridor procedure. But uh, before we start with the webinar together with Peter, uh, we are organizing a very short poll, uh, four questions, and uh, we will leave you uh, approximately 20 seconds to answer. This will help us uh, to uh, better design uh, the new um, webinar in the future. Thank you. So, okay, thank you very much for your answer. Uh, we start, we go through uh, uh, the agenda of today's uh, webinar, and the first question is probably the most easy question. Peter, can you explain what is a fast corridor? Uh, absolutely, Daniela. We'll try to keep it as simple as we can. Um, we could define fast corridors as in intangible infrastructures. Uh, by which uh, the import of goods uh, is allowed uh, without the emission of a, a T1 custom transit document. So um, import without having to, um, uh, by uh, moving uh, the uh, containers from the uh, maritime hub to an, an inland logistic hub. Thank you, Peter. Um... Uh, this is one of the examples where customs uh, are trying to improve uh, uh, the reliability, improve the efficiency of the services in Italy. This is also recognized by some of the most important international index. For instance, the Logistic Performance Index, which is issued every two years by the World Bank, is saying clearly that Italy is gaining in the ranking through the improvement of digitalization and especially customs procedure. So, uh, which are the main benefits that customer can achieve via fast corridors? Okay, Daniela, we have pinpointed uh, a number of uh, benefits uh, for, from ca using fast corridors. Uh, on the slide you see around 12 dozen. Um, we start with uh, no custom procedures to be executed at the port of entry, which is one of the dogmas of fast corridors. Um, there's the, no chance for customs inspection required by the Italian automatic risk analysis system. There's a reduction, which is today is also very important, of uh, the environmental footprint, uh, allowing for less reduced uh, uh, um, emissions of gases. Uh, overall, there's a faster process along the whole supply chain. Um, there's a smart and more effective intermodal mix, uh, enabled by uh, integration of data flows amongst the different logistics operators acting within the supply chain. Uh, there's a single window and digital custom process management. Uh, obviously, um, with the movement of containers from uh, maritime terminals to inland terminals, there's a decongestion or poor areas, and uh, very associated with that, there's also a reduction with the container's idle time import, so of course a cost reduction, uh, and the end-to-end -end transit time is reduced. Uh, obviously there's a big deal of digitalization involved in the process, which is one of the key aspects of fast corridors, but overall uh, we can simplify with these 
five main points. As I said, there's a reduction of idle time, the risks involved because it is a, there's a lot of monitoring by the central uh, customs agency. Uh, there's a possibility to anticipate the preparation of custom documentation or digitalized. And on the other side, there's a postponed payment of custom duties at a later stage, uh, which I reckon is one of the most important aspects of fast corridors. Uh, it gives you another alternative for your supply chain, uh, as long as alongside other existing. And overall, we improve the synchronicity and a reduced overall time to market to the selling point. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, this is in tune uh, with uh, one of the main aspects, uh, which is uh, today involving uh, um, uh, the development of import activities in Italy. And I'm talking especially about the, the Southern Gateway option. So the chance to use Italian ports to better serve uh, Italian domestic market first, but also uh, over the Alps uh, uh, markets. I'm referring especially Switzerland, south of Germany. Uh, this is also a consequence of two main infrastructure development. Uh, the, the new capacity in the Swiss Channel, which has been improved and making uh, the Mediterranean more centric within the global supply chain trades, as well as uh, the involvement and the development of the Gotthard Tunnel, which will help and will support a more competitive uh, rail service from Italy uh, through uh, Switzerland and uh, um, and the south of Germany. But if we go back uh, to the import, uh, the main import process, and if we look at Italy, as you can see from these slides, uh, the, the, the major concentration of distribution center, of, of regional distribution center, are located in the north of Italy. This area represents approximately 45-50% of the total GDP. So. Uh, the question is, uh, where are today available the fast corridor, especially the intermodal fast corridor? Okay, Daniele. There are, uh, today there are uh, seven uh, intermodal fast corridors. The first of which was uh, established uh, in uh, June 2015, uh, and actually at Conship, uh, La Spezia Container Terminal. Uh, with a train between uh, La Spezia and Melzo, where our inland uh, rail hub is based. Um, it was fully managed and monitored in accordance with the new procedures, uh, as uh, it is for fast corridors, and uh, uh, determined by the Italian Custom Agency in compliance with the ADA system, which is the Central Custom Agency's IT system. Um, as you can see from the slide, um, they are both from Genoa and La Spezia. Uh, La Spezia, to, as I said, to Melzo, the pioneer fast corridor in 2015. Then there's uh, Voltri to Rivalta Scrivia, which is in the Piedmont area, as well as from La Spezia. La Spezia to the Padova area, um, to the Parma, uh, which is in Emilia Romagna. And also in the Emilia Romagna area, there's Termina Rubiera, which is Reggio Emilia. Thank you, Peter. Uh, this is the second time we are talking about fast corridor. The first webinar was organized in Italian language, but then we received a lot of uh, questions and uh, we decided also to organize this webinar in English. Even if actually uh, the fast corridor are only related with import uh, of Italian flows uh, in the north of Italy, as you can see and as you described it uh, um, today. Um, um, uh, let me say one thing. When we made uh, this uh, uh, first time of this webinar, one of the questions that I submitted to Stefano Morelli, head of uh, custom services for Conceptella Group, was uh, why do you trust us so much in this type of alternative in terms of procedure? So now I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you the same. Okay. Uh, why you, as a commercial manager, you trust in this type of development, and also which are today the customer, the type of customer can access the fast corridor procedure? Okay, then yeah. Uh, well, let, allow me to say, Conship believes uh, uh, in this uh, value-adding opportunity. It's an alternative to existing uh, products on the market. But um, there's two or three main aspects which I think are, are, are worth mentioning uh, about fast scores. And first of all is the fact that effectively the payment is postponed. Custom duties are taken care of at a later stage. 
and this benefits the customers, whether these are shipping lines, freight forwarders, or importers, cargo owners. Also, there's a link to the, this, this point, is the fact that the time lapse between the payment of duties, therefore the later stage, and the end selling point is shortened. So there's less time between the payment of duties and when the goods are actually sold on the market, whether it's in a production cycle or a customer retail uh, product. And uh, of course, this is in, uh, specific, maybe more for cargo owners, the end-to-end -end transit times are reduced. So overall, as we said, uh, there's three type of main cust categories of, of customers we can think of, shipping lines, freight forwarders, and important, uh, importers. And for example, it's important for those already using the rail option, or those customers who are willing to improve the efficiency of their logistics uh, processes and supply chains. Uh, those who are particularly sensitive to, as we said, eco-friendly aspects, uh, such as the reduction of the carbon imprint. Uh, so there are different different uh, reasons why uh, this alternative is considered a value-adding opportunity. Uh, clear. Thank you, Peter. We now move into the second part of this webinar, which uh, uh, will try to be a little bit more technical. And uh, we know that talking about customs sometimes could be difficult because there are technicalities involved, there are a specific procedure, but uh, I'm sure that you will do your best to keep it as easy as much as possible. Uh, the question is, uh, can you describe uh, which is the main process, logistic process, uh, when a customer decides to import uh, via a fast corridor? Okay, uh, we try to um, streamline the whole process down to eight points, as you can see on your screen. Obviously, it all starts with the fact of listing the containers on the fast corridor and declaring them, uh, having them declared by the shipping agent. Then there's the famous manifesto, MMA, uh, which is prepared by the shipping line, uh, which identifies the, the fast corridors and their inland destination. And there's a third step uh, where uh, the train, uh, there's a train planning um, process for fast corridors, can begin at the port rail terminal. The transport mission manager uh, gives notice uh, to the custom barrier crossing to the financial police at the port rail gate. Uh, the same transport mission manager gives them notice of the departure of the train. This is all in line with the, uh, the fact of monitoring the whole process as we said at the beginning for security reasons. Uh, the transport mission manager then conducts real-time monitoring and communicates uh, with this flow of information immediately any technical problem or delay should this occur. And then we get to the final stage of the process where the transport mission manager uh, gives notice to the train arrival at the logistics node uh, to the ADA system. And finally, the mission manager provides confirmation of the introduction of the containers into temporary storage facility. Let me just um, dwell on the explaining a little bit more what the transport mission manager is. And uh, usually, uh, the mission manager is um, the inland hub, which manages the whole process from the maritime terminal to the inland terminal. And in our case, specifically in the country group, we are well acquainted with this product through uh, RHM, which is our real hub, Milano hub in, uh, in Lombardia. Thank you, Peter. And uh, what a customer has to do if we want to start tomorrow using a fast corridor for their import trade? Okay, then this is a very good question, Nelly, because uh, first of all, he or she must be aware of this opportunity on the market. So as we've seen before on the slide, there are seven custom corridors in, in Italy, intermodal custom corridors, and uh, most of them in La Spezia. Um, they must identify which route they would like to follow for their custom corridor of interest. Uh, they must uh, contact the local shipping line office uh, and ask to, to benefit from this, this option uh, if available. And uh, finally and very importantly is they must align some of the company's processes in terms of the digitalization and automation uh, to allow the, uh, a smoother flow of documents uh, between the parties involved. Thank you, Peter. Also keeping easy this uh, type of uh, uh, information. I repeat, uh, the idea of Township Italia managing those kind of webinars is also to um, improve uh, the efficiency on uh, how information flows to the market, because sometimes those kind of aspects are not easy to understand unless you are not involved directly in the operation and in the process. 
So we are quite close to the end of this webinar, but uh, uh, let me uh, first of all remind all the one uh, connected today with us that uh, they can download the slides we are uh, using today through uh, the bottom which is placed on the right uh, side of the panel in the monitor where is uh, described as handouts. You can click and then you have the option to download. Also, I remind you that we will make a message of follow-up, uh, also including a link from where all the one uh, are, uh, are able to download the slides presented and also to answer a few questions we will send in order to further improve the effectiveness of this kind of uh, information instrument. But uh, before we go to the end, uh, we open the Q&A session. Everyone which is connected can uh, submit questions. We will try to answer in real time. Otherwise, we can also be able to uh, answer separately in, in a second time during the follow-up via email. We already received the two questions during the first webinar. So I would like to start from the first one which is, uh, uh, Peter, can you try to list the difference uh, and explain the difference between a, a fast corridor procedure and the procuring procedure? Yes, um, basically the difference uh, is, uh, one is basically the opposite of the other, whereas fast corridors, custom duties are paid at a later stage, as we said, um, whereas pre-clearing, the custom duties are taken care of while the, the ship is actually still at sea. So that means 24, 48 hours um, before discharge at the terminal. So basically, it's just a question of deciding which alternative is best for a customer supply chain. Yes, correct. Uh, and this explains why those kind of products are uh, alternatives. Absolutely. And uh, a Comship Italia group believes that the, the number of alternatives are, are, are available could benefit the, the global efficiency of the supply chain because there are different types of cargo, there are different types of requirements. The second question we received is about the certification uh, AEO, uh, which is an uh, um, economic authorized operator. Does a customer need to be certified AEO to access a fast corridor? The answer is no, Daniel. But the transport mission manager, uh, which we talked about before, has to be certified. And uh, hence the opportunity provided by a group such as Conship, whereas all the Conship group entities from maritime terminals such as LSCT or the actual intermodal operator, Hannibal, and the inland hub RHM are all AEO certified and are actually long now long experience with this value adding opportunity. So. so. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you for your time. You'll be really pleased to stay with you today, and thank you for your support. I hope that everyone enjoyed uh, this uh, webinar. This is a series of webinars. It's our intention to propose new webinars, mostly one every month. Uh, I repeat, uh, time to target uh, which could be relevant topics for the global supply chain and where Conship can in better inform the market. I uh, ask everyone to continue to follow uh, Conship Italia Group. As you can see on the monitor, you can send an email uh, directly to Peter Robino at ConshipItalia.com for any type of question or more specific uh, uh, requirements, or you can write to the general email address info cs at conshipitalia.com. Uh, I will hope that you will join in this webinar and ask you to continue to follow uh, our uh, social media channel. And I really thank you for your time and I uh, hope to see you soon at the, the webinar. Thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you. Thank you for listening.